Hello, my name is Sergio de Lamo, and in this video, I'm going to show you a new feature in MyCode Framework 5.4, which is uh, the support in MyCode views uh, of HTMX. Uh, HTMX uh, is quite a popular um, a project. Uh, you can find all the information about it in HTML.org. Uh, uh, and today, I'm going to show you a MyCode application. Uh, it's a to-do MVC implementation. To-do MVC is a project which offers uh, the same to-do application uh, implemented with many popular JavaScript frameworks. In this case, we are not going to uh, use a JavaScript framework, but MyCode instead. It's going to be a MyCode uh, Java application. Uh, so the backend code is going to be Java. We are going to render HTML uh, on the server side. We're going to use uh, Thylib, which is one of the tem supported template rendering engines by MyCode views. And we are going to use uh, HTMX to provide um, a single page application experience, basically. So I have here a uh, MyCode application. The first step that you're going to need to do uh, for using uh, HTMX is to add the MyCode views HTMX dependency. Uh, I'm going to run the app uh, and I'm going to show you. Um, so I have here the app running. Um, I'm going to open the developer tools uh, so that you can see the network tab, which is quite interesting. Um, so I'm going to uh, clear the network tab and I'm going to write here layer micronaut. And let me, it basically stopped uh, on the server side. Um, I put a breakpoint here. Uh, one thing that you're going to see is that uh, my controller method has the uh, HTMX uh, request header um, parameter. Uh, this is uh, basically, this will be populated if the request is coming from HTMX, it will be populated uh, if it's not coming from HTMX. For example, the user just um, visited the, the, this page for the first time, uh, this parameter will be null. So essentially, this is a way to check whether a request is coming from HTMX or not. Uh, as you see here, if I go to my uh, debug inspector, you will see the headers. Um, populated um, let me see HTMS request headers I can do something like target and you see the to-do list so I actually locked into the console the headers that we were receiving so if you see we were receiving the uh, X uh, HX request true that essentially will basically go always true when it's coming from an HTMS request you see the target that I just uh, printed to the console, you see the trigger, uh, you see the current URL. So um, all of these headers uh, are accessible. So if I do like uh, here, if I come to the debugger again and I do um, the trigger or trigger, trigger name and trigger, you see the, the, the trigger uh, header. So this is a way to basically know that a request is coming from HTMX and is uh, basically will encapsulate uh, all the uh, incoming um, HTMX related uh, HTTP headers. So here in my logic, I am checking if this is an HTML request, basically this thing is not null. Then I am rendering a fragment, uh, a timely fragment, not the whole page, but just a fragment and I am uh, also decorating the response with an HTML, HTMX, uh, HTTP response header. So this is essentially also uh, coming from the micro library where we define uh, all the headers for you um, as uh, defined by the HTML uh, documentation. Um, so you can find links to the HTMX uh, documentation in the, in the file. And this is essentially rendering a, a view, so I'm going to uh, continue execution and I will show you in the um, in the developer console. Let me exit uh, presentation mode so that I can continue here. Um, and if I go back to my browser, you see that uh, the save, uh, instead of returning me the whole HTML page, is just returning a snippet, which essentially loaded here. Uh, and another HTML request was done to get the numbers of uh, items. So you see here one item left, uh, and this was also returned here. Um, we uh, we have um, another endpoint. So this is uh, again a head uh, a get request against uh, active items count. So if I go to my 
uh, microcontrollers, this is uh, rendering uh, using the add view annotation uh, and it's again rendering a, a, a fragment of a thyme leaf um, let me show you the uh, fragments.html file this is again a, a fragment uh, it's gonna render all of this so this file contains two fragments it's gonna render this last one and uh, here I explicitly designed this uh, as kind of an HTMX only uh, method and I uh, annotate this um, parameter with not null and here I am returning in the previous example I was returning a model and view where the first uh, parameter is the view and the second one is the model here and I am using the add view annotation to return the view and uh, I am just returning in the controller method the, the model uh, if I toggle the, if I basically let me uh, disable the breakpoints and if I toggle um, the to-do item, you see the, the zero items left uh, and, and this is uh, another capability that you are going to do when you are using uh, HTMX is you can uh, send requests, uh, not just a get or post uh, request, but here I am sending a put request and getting a put request in the MyCon server. So this is the put uh, the put method uh, for toggling the, the request uh, against this is a kind of an HTMX only um, controller method and uh, again I am here returning uh, like a, a, um, a timely fragment and I am also uh, decorating with the HTMX trigger so we are looking forward for you to try uh, the MyCode views uh, HTMX integration. Let us know what you think. Let us know uh, what else uh, should we add. Uh, and before uh, I uh, wrap this video, uh, please remember to check the um, MyCode views documentation uh, where you will find um, more or less what I showed you in this video, but also we support uh, things such as out of band swaps. Uh, which you can use to um, to get the most out of uh, your MyCode applications and the HTMX integration. Uh, again, thanks uh, for viewing the, the video uh, and thanks to the MyCode Foundation sponsors uh, for making the, the framework uh, development and um, advocacy possible. Thank you.